Hello everyone, and welcome back to Space Quest 4. Let's play Space Quest 4 with Sierra Game Scott. Um, we have just completed purchasing the inter, uh, the universal plug, or whatever it's called, uh, that we need for our Pocket Pal computer that we've picked up um, all the way back at the beginning of uh, the game. And so we need to head back to Space Quest 12, which will be the last uh, version of the game which we'll encounter. I believe, before uh, we conclude the game. <laughs> and this is just another thing that could really be a pain if you f actually did not go into that first space to craft and pick up the uh, laptop or even pick up the battery. <laughs> you could probably uh, go all this way and uh, not have what you need. So this game definitely does make it uh, is very punishing if you do not pay attention to what you're doing. And um, and of course, because you only can have so many saves in one directory, I think most people would probably have overridden um, a lot of what they did earlier on, although going that far back might not matter. Uh, so uh, it could be it could be very frustrating. I don't remember the first time when I played this through um, how bad it was. I do recall vaguely uh, having to restart a couple. I not restart, but go back backtrack quite a bit. Interestingly, uh, the the sequel police officer scene with the uh, skater, um, whatever they call it. Uh, the skating area in the mall wasn't all that difficult. I mean, I certainly had the walkthrough. Maybe it's just that you have to know to go up, go back down, and get the heck out of there. Um, and that's not something that's um, quite that uh, logically sound uh, if you're just playing without a hint guide. But uh, um, in any event, it was not that difficult. I think some of the other stuff was was far seemed far more inaccessible to me. But uh, it is definitely a different game when you are playing with um, with a hint guide and not. Not trying to do it, uh, not trying to learn on your own. Definitely some difficult puzzles in this game, though. Alright, so, we are finally back to Space Quest 12 and approaching the conclusion. Uh, still, probably a few more videos left. And we will see what happens as we proceed. So, as you recall, last time we went into that room went through the maze, hopefully the lasers and everything are still the way they were. That smoke sure is lasting a while, <laughs> if, if they are. Uh, as you recall, we used a cigar smoke to be able to see the lasers. Um, however, in the real world, to the extent that you can do that, um, uh, certainly wouldn't be quite as wide of an area, and certainly uh, once the smoke dissipates, it would not no longer be... you'd be able to see the lasers from my understanding. In any event, um, this is not intended to be entirely scientifically accurate, obviously. And is actually kind of a spoof on Star Wars and so many other, th other sci-fi uh, media. Alright, but fortunately for us, that we don't have to deal with that silly um, puzzle anymore. It is amazing that a lot of these Sierra games came out well before the internet, or at least before the web was used or all that popular. And uh, so you pretty much had no choice but to learn it yourself or pay, I think they had a 1-800 number or 1-800 number or something to call, where you could pay to, um, uh, shoot, pay to uh, get a hint. And I don't think it was that cheap. Alright, so let's take this thing and you attach the plug to the Pocket Pal. Alright, so let's uh, select the Pocket Pal. And boy, that uh, thing is annoying. I think that's the robot in the back. Okay. And as you can see, there's a uh, blue thing that we should avoid. I think that blue thing is the robot. And I think it means that the robot found us. But yeah, essentially, uh, by plugging it in there, you can, s you can track the robot's movements. I think this was what you need to trigger the next scene. I'm not sure how important. Oh, come on, let's go. So it seems like... There we go. And that guy is coming for us now. And can we get out of there in time? No. Alright. So I guess you have to do that fairly quickly. So as soon as we see that, I think we just need to, um flee. So let's try that again. 
probably should have saved and realized that was going to come up quite as quickly. Yeah, so essentially what we're doing in there is you can see the blue thing, the thing that's coming towards you, is um, the, the robot. I'm not really sure what the point of that is. <coughs> Pardon me. I mean, you kind of know where he is anyway, I think. So I guess what we need to do is save the game, first of all. For 40. Alright, let's do this quickly. Come on. Alright, 40 is to save the game, and then deal with this as quickly as possible. And then you have to try to make it to the left, but he might the robot might be blocking your way. So you've got to be careful how you move around, then essentially I guess you use these terminals that you see, here's another one, and you can actually look to see where the robot is. So I don't think there's any real set path, you just have... Okay, so the robot's over there, so let's get the heck out of here. Oh, shoot. Yeah, let's... Alright, so he's over there. We don't want to be there, we want to get the heck out of here, so... He should be coming from the left, if that map is accurate. Yep. So that robot's on our heels. Let's keep Roger moving. And, alright, let's see where this rope from behind you somewhere. Alright, come on, hurry up. The problem here is that that guy moves pretty quickly, so... Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Well, we don't need a robot. Take a good look, Roger. Remember this poor wretched soul? For he is your son. Well, that's interesting. Too bad, uh, I think we're toast on this one. Okay, so I'm not sure if we were supposed to actually log into those screens. We may not have supposed to have seen that until later on. Fortunately... Alright. <coughs> so I'm not... 100% sure, because, um, alright, put the plug in here, ah, shoot, alright, I won't waste too much of your time, you kinda got the idea, so, we'll try this one more time, if not, um, we'll either come back in another video, which is, we are getting a little close to the end, or I'll pause it here, um, I was gonna plan to make a longer video, since, uh, there's a lot to do, but, okay, so here he comes, Let's get the, let's get out of here, man. That guy just goes fast. Okay, yeah, I hear that. All right, so he's coming from the left side, and we're not gonna try plugging anything in. We're gonna try to avoid this guy and see if we can uh, pull him off. See, I don't understand if you um, just download the map program, you can kind of look at it anytime you want, and or I don't think you need to plug things in because as we sh showed in the last time when we plug something in, um, it showed up the message from Valhall. So, alright, let's get at it. Yeah, I understand. Let's go. So I don't want to pause while that guy's too close, because I don't want to get fried. And I think... Alright, so there's the droid. And what I think we want is to be able to get to this platform over here. Alright, so hopefully that robot's not coming. Maybe we can use this here. See if it'll help us at all. Take a good look, Roger. Alright. 
Yeah, it's the same annoying thing. So this is how he tells us that's our son. Of course, he wants to lure us back here in the first place, so... Uh, what do you... Oh, shoot. Yeah, that seems to be a dumb idea to l use the, uh... Come on. Ah. Alright, well, I'll tell you what. We've hit gone over the ten-minute mark. Uh, let me get us to the next point. And sorry, you have to skip over some of it, but I, don't, I think it's going to be hard for me just to kind of figure it out on the fly. So, um... For a fleeting moment, you are impressed with the droid's accuracy. I think I read that before. Anyway, um, we'll be back, and I'll be in the next part. And if I need to explain anything, what happened, I will be sure to do so. In any event, uh, until next time, this is Sierra Game Scott, signing off.